Hello fellow Haskellers. <clears throat> so this one today is about, uh, this episode today is about uh, state T. As we've gone through uh, writer T and uh, reader T, we're going to put look at a, uh, a monad, which is basically both of them. And so it has the power to be a writer, it has the power to be a reader. And that it can read in um, some starting values. And it is a little bit different from reader because reader, you are um, not allowed to change the value of your environment or you know the config that you are reading in. Whereas um, writer, on the other hand, is you are able to change it, but you can never read it. It's a write-only value up until the end of the monad when we do our run writer t. Uh, with state t. It's a mix of the two. So we have a starting value, just like reader, but we are able to change it as the monad progresses. And so this is kind of, um, I mean, um, sounding close to what we might think about with, with a different language, you know, where we have global variables, but we, and we don't have global variables here. Um, we have, you know, I guess controlled variables. We have, Variables which are, pardon me, available throughout the uh, I/O or sorry, throughout the state T monad. Um, however, uh, we have a definite value, or yeah, we have a definite value for what to expect um, for our state. So I'm just gonna put this here, um, state. So I'm just annotating my types here, and. So, um, yeah, so let's get into it because I think this is a pretty good example. So I mentioned in my last video that I, while doing some research for the channel, came across a solution for uh, a problem I was having. And so I tried to make a very similar example to um, how to keep track of state. And so, and, and, and especially a case where we have value over and above the writer monad. So writer and state, again, we can both accumulate values. Um, you know, I, I have this record, right? And there's no reason that I couldn't have like part of it be kind of behaving like reader. And really this field does, I'll get to that in a second. And then I could really have this field behaving like writer in the sense that it's accumulating results. With writer though, um, and there is such a thing as, you know, I, I, we could, even use this to, um, we, we could even use this uh, an int for our writer monad where we are continually updating such an int. For example, if we wanted to just sum up a bunch of values uh, across uh, iterations, I suppose, then um, we can easily just tell that there's a new sum, right? The function of tell, so we would say tell uh, sum two, and that would then cause our state internally to say sum two plus sum x or whatever the previous one was. And so let's say it was sum three. This would give us sum five. And it would look like this. Right, we have sum, get sum equals five. And we can extract that at the end. But, um, and, and so yeah, really we're doing that here. Uh, what I had as an example where I could not use writer was I needed to build a map. So I needed to build a map of uh, URLs to um, a specific event on that URL. Um, and so instead of you know, what I was originally doing was, and I had to kind of scrape in a tree-like fashion. And so, um, basically the data that I had built up was just um, impossible to sort of um, not overload. I, it, it was impossible, to, it, with, with the way I was doing it, it, it was very easy to uh, slow my, my program down a ton. Um, 
because I was doing a bunch of unions with the maps. And so let's say this is, um, I don't know, let's say this was a list of LM. Um, and so LM is a, a type from my scrappy library, which I am using here. And it just literally represents an HTML element. It has a, a field for the, uh, the tag, you know, for example, a tag uh, has the attributes, it has the inner text, uh, and a couple of other things. Um, and so let's say that we have that. We're just trying to keep track of all of the elements um, on this page. And it got to the point where, and, and so basically why I actually needed something like this was because I could revisit a URL and I wanted to find what was referencing that URL. And so I'd have to merge uh, the data, basically. And the way I was doing that, like I said, it was through unions. Um, so it was extremely inefficient. And then, and then I said, okay, well, what if I just do the merging at the end? So, you know, it is possible to say from list where we have uh, a bunch of key values in a list of tuples, right? So this is key two, V2, um, so on and so forth. And I could run this, and this would give me a map of uh, map of KV, map of key value. However, um, I am expecting this list to be absolutely massive. So this is not going to work because I'm going to run out of memory before I complete my scraping operation. And so what can I do? Um, I was actually even at first thinking about using a database just to, um, you know, get it, get that memory out of my program in the smart way. Uh, however, I realized that I can use state T. And so uh, I can use state T through a function called modify, where I'm effectively saying one at a time. So if these are coming in, and this is what we would expect with a monad is that we we have values accumulating over time um, and a list is a nice way to think about that uh, a map by the way is also a monad um, but it's not really relevant and um, so um, so basically what I'm doing is as that stream comes in instead of accumulating I am modifying so I am taking that new input and then adding it to the map. And so I have a function um, insert insert into into map. We'll call it. It's not actually what it's called, but it will take a a key and these are made up types key and a value and a map of key value and then it will return me a newly updated map of key value. And so this will insert, um, the actual function is insert with, insert with, um, and then I had a function that put the values together and accumulated the values um, actually quite simply. But uh, so this insert with would check if the key already existed in the map and then would merge the values if the key already exists. If the key does not exist, it would just put the value, or sorry, put the key and value in the map as a new uh, new field. So, um, and that solved my problem because I knew that in some way or another, I needed to go from these key values, uh, the key being a link, and the value being uh, something else. Um, and, and so I had to go from this kind of stream of input, whether I wanted to model that stream of input as a, as a list or not, is another thing to be said, but I have effectively, it's, you know, by, by nature, I have a stream of input. And so this modify function allowed me to handle that stream of input and continually and effectively O1, not exactly O1, um, but well, not, not at all O1, um, but instead do an insert with on each page instead of what I was doing before, which was 
having a tree of maps that I had to then merge together. And so that was extremely slow. Um, but yeah. And, and so even, even too, the interesting thing that kind of was eye opening for me was that uh, even though I was doing this sort of this tree, like scraping pattern, um, state T actually still worked sequentially, which of course makes sense in hindsight. Um, but even though, you know, to me, I'm thinking of it as being a tree where one page leads to another, leads to another, leads to another, and then eventually I reach a dead end, and then I start on another branch, and then, you know, go on, so so on and so forth. Um, state T is still going to operate on that sequentially, and so I was effectively, um, I'm going to call it O-N in terms of, you know, the, the, uh, the actual operation being an insert with, which is itself not O-N, no, not O of N, but... Um, radically different different performance. So it just you know allowed me to model my code a lot better. So I have a very simplified version of that, and so um, my state here that I have um, you know in my using for my state t monad transformer. I'm just going to change this. Um, so it carries a manager um, and a result, which I had as int. And so, um, like I was saying, this is gonna be our, our reader portion here. This is gonna behave like writer, except I do actually have the ability to just read it. Um, and so what I'm doing in my function is I'm saying, I just want to scrape a bunch of random pages I will go off randomly and randomly and randomly um, and I will just keep track of how many uh, a elements right the a tag um, why am I blanking yeah um, how many of these tags I see on the page I just want to figure that out I just want to do a little research study on how many um, what was the max of these, um, the max number of links that I will see on a page if I just go off and do a random sample. So, yeah. So now let's, let's actually get into it. Um, and so in order to, you know, make that manager, again, this is very much like reader. I do new manager, TLS manager settings, which is just the point about, I'd actually build this manager not necessarily related to state T, uh, but then I take that state T, or sorry, I take that manager and I put it in my state uh, along with a zero, wrap it with the, the uh, data constructor, and then that will be my initial state. And if I look at the type of run state T, If look at the type of state T, it takes a state T SMA expression and some initial state, and then it's gonna return us um, an A and an S wrapped in the inner monad of state T. So our inner monad is IO. This means that if I say X here, X is going to be of the type, um, well, our A here is a tuple, or sorry, unit. And so this is gonna be of the type unit. And then um, I suppose our state, yeah. So this will be the type, is it a unit and a state. And the state will be the final value after the result of all of our actions inside of the state he monad. <clears throat> so let's get to that. Um, and we don't actually care about that. So um, the first thing I do that actually is relevant to state is I use the function gets. So just like we had ask and asks uh, with an S at the end, um, suffering, fucker touch. We have gets and we have get and gets. So if I look at the type of get, it just gets me the entire state. So this would return something of the type state. Um, actually, 
gets, it takes an accessor function. So for example, I could say manager, give me manager. And actually, I'm just gonna change the name of this. Let's see my manager. And just to you know, be clear about the names. Um, and um, where was I? Oh yeah, and, and so I guess I gotta fix this. I don't know what I did here. Uh, oh, this is expecting a link. Why is that? Let me figure this out quick. Oh, uh, I, I see the issue. I just never said that this takes a link. A link is just basically, you can think of it as a fancy type for um, URLs, where URLs are just some string looking like this, and I have a link constructor. Um, it doesn't really matter, and this is not about Scrappy, so I'm gonna, I'm just using the, the Scrappy pieces to kind of illustrate the points about uh, state T. Um, but, so anyways, that, that's the first part, and then I do my, my function, or my scraping, I get an HTML, well, and then I do my, sorry, I get the HTML, I do some scraping, and I ask the results, I see if there's matches, and in the case that there is, I use another function from state T, which is modify. And so this is where we get into, um, well, I, you know, it, it's a better writer, in my opinion, because um, tell I can only uh, push a new value, a, a new monoidic value uh, to the uh, the memory held by writer. Um, whereas modify, so modify, modify takes a function, right? The modify function takes a function from me that I'm gonna write. And uh, when I give it that, it's, an ex a state, sorry, a state T expression. And so I can run it in the, in the, you know, base here. I don't have to use a let statement or whatever. Um, and modify the function that I've given it here is one which takes state and uh, puts a new state with the results that I found um, and the, and based on the results that I found and the old state. So, as mentioned, the goal of this program is to find um, the max number of links that we can find on some random page. Don't care about anything else. And um, so I unwrap state T, or sorry, I unwrap state. It has the manager and the result. What do they call it state? That's kind of a bad name for it. You know what? I'm gonna say, um, highest and I'm gonna say here highest um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna check how many matches are on this page and then I'm gonna compare it with the highest so far so max is just a very simple function it takes the the max of two values that's given and so that puts a new uh, a new state and so if I look at if I was to print the value of state in this line here I would see that state is zero whereas if I was to print at this point well actually sorry at this point because that will be affected by other things if I was to print the value of state at this point I would see uh, well first off I can't print a manager but I can print the result. Um, so if I printed the result, then I would see whatever the length of matches is. 
and then so on and so forth with um, I would be printing out what the max value is at that point. And so this can continually change. The value here is not expected to be, or is not uh, guaranteed to be the value here. It can be if this case, um, if I find that highest is larger than uh, this value here. Um, but that is the point is that as the uh, steps or actions of the state team monad are executed, the state is able to change and we can read that changing state. Um, but uh, so how, how is this different from, you know, object oriented or um, other languages, generally speaking? And what's important to note here is that because we have a monad, um, we are guaranteed about what step or what action will run at what time. Um, and so for example, let's say in Python, I have a list, um, and I am popping off of that list. It is, um, it is kind of indeterminate. Um, well, especially if I have two, let's say I have, I have two different things, um, popping from that list. And so I guess I would have, um, how can I model this? Um, if some condition, let me think this through. If some condition x is dot pop and else nothing else pass, um, and then this is only going to execute if some other condition does not like the house or the, the Python. Um, so I guess what I'm trying to say is that um, if we're looping here, I'm just gonna put while true because I don't want to actually think about this. This is Python code, so it's kind of ugly. Um, if we are looping here, and um, we have two conditions, it's very. Hard. It's just I guess this isn't like exactly what I was hoping to say here. Um, I guess I would have to get into a more complicated model with Python in order to demonstrate the full point of what I was trying to say, but it is hard to reason about what, um, what the state of, of X's is going to be at each point in time, especially since X's is somewhat of a global variable is available throughout the entire, um, entire function. And, um, so, you know, we just have a lot of, a lot of room for uh, confusion, I suppose. Whereas, uh, and anyways, this is not a Python lesson, but um, in this case, we know, right, it's very easy to reason about the flow of, of events, right? This is really just these, what is it? One action, two action, uh, three actions, four. These four actions are always going to happen in the same order. And so, you know, if I'm reading and writing to state, um, it's it's doable and very easy to reason about um, what the state should be and how the state is changing um, as actions go on. Um, and yeah, and that's that's really it uh, in terms of, of state. Um, I don't think there's anything else to mention in terms of, uh, in terms of functions that exist. That is really it. I mean, um, run state, eval state. These are all just variants of, you know, run state t effectively, um, which I don't use. Oh, and then yes, actually, I did. I did miss put. So put is kind of like a simple modify in the sense that um, we could say put 
um, puts is equal to modify where we um, state one, where we throw out the value of state one. And we just put state two. Um, that's what that's what put is. And so if I was to literally just say, you know, I could just say put um, state manager. Um, I, I guess I have to put this down here. Put state manager and zero, which would just automatically reset it to zero, no matter what has happened before that point. Um, and so yeah, that, that's really it. I cannot possibly think of anything else that matters. Um, yeah. Um, and there's some examples they have there, but that, that's really it in terms of the theory of state T and why you would want to use it. Um, so yeah, as well as a use case. So again, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Please like, share, and subscribe. Tell all your friends. Um, about simple Haskell and um, happy coding.